Episode number 215 is proudly sponsored by the NHP Talent Group, connecting world-class agencies and innovative brands with the best talent. People say it all the time. If there's something you don't know how to do, hire somebody to do it. It's that fucking simple. And I moved so fast that I didn't even pause for a second and say, all right, let's do a quick analysis. Let's do a quick gut check. Why are the numbers not moving in a direction? The feedback's incredible. Welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Hoff, where we talk about life, dreams, social media, and business. Well, hello, and welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Huff. Folks, I'm fired up today. It is Friday. We just had a funny moment because T Huff effed up the intro. But I'm pumped up today, and I'm, I think after this show, you're going to want to start a podcast, you're going to want to listen to this man's podcast, and you're going to want to know who this man is, because we're bringing you our featured guest today, Adam Posner. Adam, are you ready to be real? Travis Buff. I mean, Travis Huff. Thank yes. you so much for having me on. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the show, man. I am amped up. It is Friday. Let's do this thing, man. Thanks for having me on, brother. I love it. Absolutely. And if, just to get to know my man, because we're having this funny moment here. Uh, he is the connection conduit, folks. He is the founder and managing partner and director of NHP Talent Group. And we're going to get into that as really focused on talent acquisition. And, and, and that's a very interesting business. I'm curious to how you find talent and, and where you find this, because I know a lot of businesses have this issue, as well as he is a podcast host, folks, and he has the podcast. And it is an awesome show. I've actually been on the show, folks, so you got to check out my episode when it comes out here pretty soon. And the other thing he does is he actually does a, his own live. So he has the podcast live, which is very interesting in that it's a live format, unedited, more real. Uh, but pleasure to have you on the show today. How's your day going today, my brother? Travis, thanks for having me on, my man. It is Friday. We got the weekend ahead of us. We are wrapping up a, a crazy week. And uh, I love doing Friday shows, man. Yeah, dude. Fridays and Mondays. Those are the best because Mondays get you ready for the fo- uh, the week, you know, getting the mindset. I, every, every show I've ever done on the show, folks, is it gets me fired up. Afterwards, maybe my, my face is a little flush. I've got my elevation levels. You know, I'm just feeling that mojo. And then on Fridays, it's great because I've right. already gone through a bunch. And, and now it's an opportunity to kind of reconnect and learn. I always learn something new. Uh, but, but, but my most important question to you, my man, is tell us about the NHP Talent Group. Tell us about your business, yeah, what you absolutely. do, and how you actually – I'm really curious into how you find these people. Yes, that's such a such a great question. So NHP Talent Group, uh, we're a boutique recruitment firm uh, based here in New York City, specializing in all things advertising and marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I am close to my three year anniversary with this company. Uh, spent a couple of years in working for other people in search firms. And I said, screw that. I got to work for myself. And once I made that move to work for myself, everything else opened up in my life, all the good stuff, learning about my how like all these strengths and crazy shit that I had, all these superpowers all came to the surface. Because ultimately, as you know, when you have your own company, the ultimate success and failure rests on your shoulders. And it really oh. brings out the best uh, in me. Um, second part of your question, man, how do I find people? Definitely a crazy question. And that goes back to really harnessing in that superpower of being a connector. It's a matter, it's a combination of your network, you know, who you know on LinkedIn and real life who it is. And second of all, how do you approach people? How do you approach mm. someone with an opportunity? How do you not shove something in their face? How are you not forceful? And the most important thing about recruiting that I got taught on day one is understanding someone's motivations. Mm. Why does someone potentially want to make a move? Because once you understand that, then the whole conversation opens up to you, man. Got you. And so tell us a little about the people that you're hiring for too then. So you're hiring for agencies, marketing firms, maybe their internal marketing teams that they need. And then you've got the talent pool on the other end of these awesome talent. Or maybe... They're, they're still at a job, right? So maybe you're pulling some good talent yeah. from somewhere else, right? That happens it, too. It, exactly. I mean, I, I say it all the time and it's tough. Listen, I've been out of jobs plenty of times, but companies, when they hire me, they're really looking for people that are in current jobs. And, and it's tough because a lot of people are in and out of work that doesn't make them a bad candidate, doesn't make them a bad person. But companies don't need to pay me to find them somebody out of work. That's not what they're paying me for. They're looking mm-hmm. for people. And this is going to sound crazy. They want me to find somebody who's actually happy in their job. Yes. They want me to find someone. They want me to find somebody who's great and awesome and happy in their job, and try to get them to come to a better job. It sounds wow. crazy, but you don't need to pay me to not do that. Uh, and that's kind of where the shift is in, in recruiting. But my business is interesting, Travis. So you know, I certainly do traditional contingency recruiting, as a lot of people think. Uh, you know, understand recruiting in this current environment. Right. But where my bread and butter is, I and my team 
we are we embed ourselves with organizations, with brands, with agencies as an extension, an in-house extension of their current talent acquisition team. So we're not just doing recruiting. And when we are doing recruiting, we're doing it on their behalf. I represent mm. the company, not an outside recruiter, and it's a much different conversation. It's gotcha. a much different approach because you are the brand ambassador versus being an outside recruiter. So a little bit different dynamic there. That's fascinating. So you, in a way, you're a white label. You've kind of created your own white label for because you become part of their team. That's exactly, exactly what I do. And I talk about this all the time, too, when it comes to and that. And I know we're not going down the, the talent. And, and also, uh, I can't coin this expression, but we are in the process, me and some other folks in the industry, of changing it from talent acquisition to talent access. We're taking away the word acquisition. Mm. Acquisition is very transactional. Access is a two-way street, my man. I'm giving my clients access to the talent and I'm giving talent access to the opportunities, Mm. hence playing into the conduit part. So that is something we're moving into. It's just the modern way of thinking about it, right? Like it's, it's, it's how it's done. Acquisition is such a transactional word and we are humans first. We are not transactional. Right. And and at the end of the day, everyone wants to be happy too. I think that's the most important thing. Like you said, is you want happy people that are productive. They're not just sitting bullshitting on their computers. You know, I've, I'm reading this book, uh, Indistractable, Indistractable. It's a fascinating book about our time and hmm. how to be indistractable from our pings on our phone and the emails we get. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. These devices are meant to be like psychological drugs for us. And so there's it's just fascinating. It's just fascinating. You know, it, it, there's no right or wrong answer to, you know, how distractible or indistractable you are. But I know that, yeah. that there, there is a piece to where like, if you can be indistractable and you can, and you can find your productivity moments, you don't need to be working eight hours. You can be getting this shit no. done in six hours, four hours, you know what I mean? It's, and then enjoy your so, family. It's, it's so true. And, and that's what I found as well. Once I switched my model to work in my, for myself and working from home, I could get more done in a five to six hour dedicated period I, when I don't have to commute to New York City, which we'll call it a two and a half hour round trip door to door. And I'm not wasting when I'm not wasting productive time sitting on a train. And don't get me wrong, when I'm on the train, you know, I'm firing off emails and stuff, but it's not the same level of productivity. Absolutely. And then when you take so, a, a function like talent acquisition does not need to be in an office all day long. Yes, there's a value to it interacting with hiring managers, part of the culture and all that kind of stuff. But there's so much time wasted. I don't want to digress oh, yeah. too much or you know, go down this road. But this applies to anybody. When you're in an office all the time and you're, you're water cooler talk, going back and forth to the kitchen, go back and <laughs> forth to the bathroom. I've seen people waste so much freaking time in an office, and especially in talent acquisition when time is of the essence. Right. So my clients, they value my model because they understand my productivity. They understand my efficiency. Mm. And this also enables me to balance multiple clients at one time. But I also think it takes a lot of skill and a certain type of personality to be able to shift from, I have four email browsers up on my screen at one time. I go from client to client. I have to be able to change the names, the conversation, the tone, the approach, the messaging. It's mind boggling, man. But it makes me, makes me crazy in a good way. Like my wife says, my wife says, you have this level of insanity that is so productive and so amazing to watch you in action, but you gotta, you gotta know when to shut it off. And I find that to be one of my problems sometimes that like is going back to distractions. Yeah. We both talked about it. We have little kids. We try to be present all the time. Right. And this thing, this phone in my hand, oh my it's God. business. It, they have your attention on it. How do we put it away? So one of the things that I've been doing, I've been, I've been trying to be a lot more present and mindful with the phone itself. Yes. I will physically put the phone out of my reach. Smart. Because your brain, it's subconscious, brother. Like you just oh want to grab God. it and look at it. and Heck yeah. I see people all the time put their phone down and they pick it back up in like less than 30 seconds. Less than 30 seconds, literally at like doctor's offices or you're just looking around, people put the fucking phone down and then like, they're like, oh shit, I got to pick this thing back up again. It's just like, what's on there? I got to find something, you know? So it's it's just our human nature. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, and then, and then I just got, my wife just got me an Apple watch for my birthday and there's two sides of it. One of it, I I think that in theory, it can make me look at my phone less, right? right? Because if you're not, like if you're just focusing on those important notifications, you could kind of manage your time a little bit that way. And the other side of it too is like, literally my, my phone is in my left pocket, my watch is on my left pocket. I have two devices that tell me everything I need within a half a centimeter of each other. How insane is that? That I need a second notification device. I know. Oh, I feel the same thing about my Fitbit. I totally feel the same thing. So this gentleman, Indistractable, would say, you got to hack all your notifications and you got to start learning how to like yep. eliminate all that shit. There's an app that he uh, suggested called Forest, which basically is like a $2 paid app. And it basically lets you 
in a way you're, you're, you're keeping a tree alive. So it's a virtual tree. You say you're going to oh. set two hours of productivity. If, if you don't, and you, you decide to look at the phone in those two hours, the tree dies. So it's oh. just a virtual way of getting you kind they of sucked should, in. They should, make it like a, they should make it like a puppy or something. I know. Right? I like, agree. Like, I think, you don't want to kill the puppy. I agree. I, and there might be one out there actually I've like chopped, this. I've chopped down some trees in my life. I mean, I think yes. I, you have to have a more of an emotional Look at that one right here. There's a tree, a small tree right here in my podcast notes. Uh, and that leads me in now to you and your show because you went from, obviously, you're running your business. You, you're able to have the flexibility of your time, folks. That's the best part about being an entrepreneur is you don't get stuck to managers and media meetings and eight hour days. Bullshit. Whatever the hell I want, man. Yeah. And, and you are in control, you know? So then that, that gives me into your show. What made you want to create the podcast? It's so, it's so crazy. So uh, I call it almost a year and a half ago at this point, you know, I saw it like everyone and their mothers putting out a podcast and I'm like, you know what? As you could tell by this conversation, I love to talk. I love to have conversations. You know, right. I love the art of conversation. I love finding out about people and learning. So I said, screw it. You know what? I'm going to try this thing. And my first show was a networking call. I said, let me okay. let me try to do something different. Let me show everyone what a, what a networking call looks like. Live, like how do people interact? What does that ah, sound like? Gotcha. So I recorded. I've never spoke to this person live before. His name is Q, Quentin Alums, and we had our first networking call. Hmm. It went pretty well. I said, mm. all right, let me turn this thing into a podcast. I got a couple buddies that are, are DJs and music producers. They threw an intro together. And then I literally on my own had to figure out how to physically put a podcast together, like mm. technically. Right. How do you do that? Right. And then the marketing side of it. And I'm like, all right, now I need to pull a lot of my knowledge about marketing and podcasting. And it all started to come together. Mm. But ultimately for me, and now we're looking back, I, uh, as of today, I have about 58 episodes aired. Heck I've yeah. been doing Boom! One a week, one a week consistently. Right. I only missed one week when I was away and then I doubled up the week after. Got you. But one a week consistently, and that's aired. I like right. to record in bunches and I'm not going to go down the, the, the whole rabbit hole there. But for me, I found through podcasting, and I'm sure you have as well, a couple things. Here are my key takeaways. One, I found a side of me that I never knew I had and I had such a passion for. I absolutely love broadcasting, creating content. Second, all this content that I create has legs to it. You know, we talk about that Gary Vee model of content. I turn it into clips. I turn it into sound bites, audiograms, graphics, and that serves as my content. Third, and I, third and four, I think are the two most important things. Third, my podcast is my canvas. My canvas for showcasing the amazing folks in my network like yourself and letting them shine. Mm. And my gift is having that ability like you have to bring out the best of people to, to have them shine. Because our network is our net worth, right? And if we can make our money shine and work harder for us, then fuck yeah, man. And oh. I've seen incredible, incredible success. And here's number four. Here's number four. And I didn't know this till it started to happen. As a businessman, as somebody who's looking for new clients from a biz dev perspective, I've had a couple of guests on my show that I probably cannot get the time of day to return a phone call, to return an email, return a cold call. But I reach out to them about coming on my show. <laughs> I just spoke to them for, not only did I just, just speak to them for an hour about them, right? they got a taste of me, how I operate, and I kind of loop in my business a little bit too. Sure. So they're getting, second of all, now we have an ongoing rapport and they're sticky to me because they're interested in the podcast coming out. So true. It is oh a, my God. It, it is a golden way of business development. And yes. not only that, I mean, you're tapping into their audience, the audience arbitrage. Uh, you know, you're speaking to them. You're, you're establishing yourself as a thought leader. Now, my question is, I, I think it's an overly saturated market. I encourage sure. everyone to try it. Sure. But not everybody needs to have a podcast. There's a lot of shit podcasts out there. Absolutely. You know, I think mine's good. I think, I mean, listen, I have cool guests like yourself on there. Yeah. But there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of noise. I mean, what do you, oh, what do yeah. you think, man? I mean, I think it's harder than ever to be a podcaster. You know, I think the average pod, uh, podcaster or piece of content creator gives up after 10 pieces of content, you know? And so Eek. they're not building the catalog. They're not willing to wake up on the day you got zero numbers. And then all of a sudden, you know, episode 58 for you has a lot more downloads than it did when you first started because, folks, he has a catalog. And you get better. You learn from your, your you know, your, your trilogy or you, you, keep, yeah. you keep learning how to become a better guest. And like yourself, yeah. I'm the same way. I want to talk all the time. I want to be involved. And when you put the, uh, the, the, the listenership, if you want to call it, or, you know, just listening, shit, you get really good at listening. And so I think that helps in a lot of different other ways too, folks, is, is being a better listener. And then an, active, an active listener. 
an active listener, an active listener. But I, I love your point because you've got to put the grind in. You've got to put, you got to realize that this is tons of content, folks, for you for the future. And then the last one, which is the kicker, is it turns into a biz dev. You can it's fucking kid, get someone kicker. that you would never spend five minutes with you to spend an hour talking about who they'd want to sit down to lunch and who they would like to talk to. And oh my God. And then, like you I, said, you're stuck to them. They're, they're stuck to you now. I, I have I, I have an incredible I mean, and I'll do a short little plug here. I am uh, next in two weeks. I have Brendan Brown on. Brendan Brown is the head of global talent for LinkedIn. He is the head recruiter, so to speak, for LinkedIn. Got you. Wow. And I cannot wait to have a conversation with this guy and pick his brain about how LinkedIn hires himself. Mm. I mean, where else could you get access to that? And the only way I was able to get access to him was showing the credibility of my show. I could have had him on as guest two. Right. No, no, I had to show that I had Claude Silver, that I had Lars Schmidt, that oh, I had Joe yeah. Katz, all these other leaders in my world on to prove my credibility. And that and those guests took time to ramp up as well. Right. And you're building this catalog. So other people looking like, oh, Adam's connected to X, Y, and Z. Adam's had these people on. That Admire. adds to my social proof and my brand. Absolutely. It's so important about the podcast. And to your mm-hmm. earlier point, man, it is so much fucking work. It is so yes. much work. And anybody who doesn't know and they think podcasting's easy, the amount of time going into prep, research, right. production, post, marketing, marketing promotional, yes. follow-up, it, it counts. And I don't know about you, and, I'm, and I'll ask you this question. For me, I would say, back a napkin, my podcast takes about 20% of my total time. Yeah, my shit. Total time. Yeah. And, and I have to say to myself, is that what's the ROI in that? Is that time being, you know, you use lightly, use wisely. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's a, it's a constant challenge. You know, I think it's a constant challenge for anyone that's out there. If it's not bringing you the revenue and I don't think most podcasters are getting paid the revenue, but it's all those other things we talked about. You're getting better at your game. You're learning and building your network. You're getting content folks. that's just delivered to you. You don't have to think about it. Your guests are creating the content shit. When Kai Fu Lee shared my show, all of a sudden I picked up a bunch of people in China that I never even talked to or heard about. And, you know, and, and that's what's so cool about show, it. you know, and so, and then you build a catalog folks. Next thing you know, you're, you know, a hundred episodes, 500 episodes in, but the key thing is, is not giving up. And so, cause it's not going to be, I, I, I've thought about giving up. Yeah. Well, don't I thought about dude. it. Well, don't because you have a kick-ass show, bro. Thank, thank you, man. And, and, and I, and I think about giving up because there's times when I look at the numbers, when I times I look at the audience growth and it's not where in my head, I think it should be. Right. Um, and so I did something about it. I said, and, and I have decent listenership. I, I feel like it's decent. It could be better. And I said, you know what? I moved at the speed of light on this show and I didn't take a second to, and it's so fucked up. Cause if you think about it, it's always the analogy of the plumber with the broken toilet, right? I'm a marketer at heart. I know what I'm doing here, but I didn't take the time to say, Hey, am I, technically on the back end, my SEO, how my show is posted on all the, the channels there. Am I doing this right? And now I'm working with a consultant who said, you know what, dude, your show is great. It could right. be a lot better. And we'll talk about how to do that. But more importantly, you're doing a lot of shit wrong on the back end. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking a TV timeout and I'm probably going to take a pause and putting a couple of shows out that I have right. already produced. Got gotcha. you. Fix the back end. Mm. I may, and I'll peel back the curtain here. He advised, I may even change the name of my show. And yeah. I'm not saying I'm going to change, I'm not going to change the podcast, but he gave me a very good example. And I'll call it, he goes, when people are searching for you on iTunes or searching for something to watch new, no one's searching for the fucking podcast. They're searching for career health, millionaire mindset, tenacity, all these different things. Right? Yes. And all these things. So I, I'm toying around with the idea and I'm, and I'm being a complete open book right now. Cause why not? I want to add value to your listeners, but like being open to change. So maybe it's like, uh, the podcast giving you career and personal advice on how to harness your inner tenacity. That way the title comes up in the search, right? But those are the things I'm open to. I'm humble enough. And I understand that if I want to do this, I may as well fucking do it right. Or, or, or hang it up or hang up the headphones. That's really a good point too. I mean, at the end of the day, you got to look at your time and your money folks. That's the two things we have in life. We don't get much more time, but we do get some more money. Hopefully each yeah. month, each year, you got to invest into it. You got to. And I think that the best thing you did was, was looking at what's where you're at, knowing that you've got all this great stuff, but saying, well, I'm also not validated by the numbers growing. And so what can I do as far as add a team member, you know, find someone that knows a lot better than me. I'm, I'm trying to do this now on YouTube and, and to try to Pay hack the algorithm with a great new guy that I got as an editor, hopefully that will make my content look badass. And he knows all the SEO back in and he knows how to do this shit, you know? And I mean, put yourself in a position to succeed if, if and, 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 and 
people say it all the time. If there's something you don't know how to do, hire somebody to do it. It's right. that fucking simple, right? It like, is. And, and I moved so fast that I didn't even pause for a second and say, all right, let's do a quick analysis. Let's do a quick gut check. Why are the numbers not moving in a direction? The feedback's incredible, right? right? The growth has just been kind of slow for me. And then like, I'll have certain guests on that have huge audiences. They're and I'm like, sharing. two things. One, the a, a, they're not sharing. Yeah. B, their audience are followers and they're not fanatics. And I think that's a very key thing to talk about. There's a lot of people that hack it and grow their numbers and they're just right. vanity metrics. Right. And it goes back to that. I think it's a Tim Ferriss thing. I'd rather have a, th a thousand fanatics than a million followers. So I'd rather true. have people. And the one cool thing that I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing a handful, 25, 30, oh, 50 people yeah. that are continually engaging with the show, the content. And, it's, and, it's, and that I see on that inverse hockey stick, oh. right? I see the hockey stick on that versus the actual download numbers. They're growing. They, they are. They're absolutely growing episode over episode. And right. to your earlier point, it's the back catalog re-listens. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you interview Tony Robbins, if you keep going, or you interview your favorite person in the world, because you can, possibly, and you've built the catalog, shit, T-Huff's episode is going to get some love. You know what I mean? So you, the whole point is you build the catalog, and all of a sudden, these people backlog the, the stuff. And then most importantly, like you said, people are engaged, you know? And yeah. the motivations always have to be different. I don't think people in podcasting are making a ton of money. I think you've got to be a Joe Rogan <laughs> to make a lot of money. So you, you I, have to have your own business, but, you know, it's right. just... You have to look at that. Okay, I got to spend some. This is my marketing channel. This is my way of meeting people that normally wouldn't want to talk to me. And it's and, outbound. It's completely yeah, it's, outbound. It's 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 a element of it's an element of your brand. And yes. if it takes time, like anything else, like if I was a if I was McDonald's and I'm putting ads out, this is my ad. This is exactly that's spot on. Like that. This is my ad, and it's my personal brand. Yep. And, and they get to know you instantly. Shit, anyone that listens to you gets to know you. They get to feel your energy. They get to see who you're, you know, how you act with people and then how you interview people. It's just fascinating. And then most importantly, like with these big people you've interviewed, you're pulling out nuggets that they never expected. And you build this trust with them. Dude. It's not business related, not shit related, you know, and that's the love of it all. The other really cool piece that I absolutely love about my podcast is um, I'm probably three quarters of the way there with interviewing somebody critical to my own career journey and career story. And it's a very personal one-on-one -on -one interview where I talk about their career mm. interwoven with my career at that point of time and the interaction we had, what I learned from them, what I took away from them. So I've had on, I had on my, one of my earlier episodes, I had the, the actual HR leader at Vayner wow. who actually fired me. The wow. lady who actually fired me. Now, she didn't make that decision. It's her job to fire people. Right. That's what HR people do. Sure. And she even said to me, she goes, I like you. I was just freaking doing my job and we had to let you go. And like, that's that. But we talk about that moment. We talk about what it wow. feels like as a human being to say to another human being, you don't fucking work here anymore. Get the fuck out. Wow. Not like that, obviously. But right. you know, you're, you're letting go. And like, what's that emotional sense to give someone bad news? Oh my God. What, what does that feel like to deliver bad news to somebody knowing that you're changing the trajectory of their life in that very moment? Right. Um, and into, into the next one. And like, listen, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on episode 100 with somebody really important to me. I'm waiting for him to kind of lock this shit down. And it's, uh, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a politics game we're getting into, but we'll, we'll get there, man. Hey, you know what? I believe in you, brother. I believe in you. And, and the bottom line is folks, anything you want to do, you can achieve, but you've got to put in the work. There's nothing that's going to happen without you putting in the work today. But now we're about to take you into our top 10, my man. Are you ready? Ooh. Let's do it. Apple or Android? Apple. Netflix or YouTube? Uh, Netflix, a million percent. Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. It's so funny. I wait. Quick, quick pause on that for a second. I used to like. I always. I'll ask you this question: When you wake up in the morning and you go on your phone for the first time, whatever, what's the first platform that you open up? If it's social, right I, I will do Instagram right now. Yeah, uh, I, I'm. I'm LinkedIn first. So there you go. Boom, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the one too, but you are the talent man. So I understand LinkedIn is the place where you can connect, build your talent. I would say LinkedIn is my top two or three. Um, Instagram seems like the one that just a lot Insta. of my family is on too. So I like seeing what they're doing I, and I like seeing- I love Insta, man. And I love your Insta too. I love engaging on, I love, I feel like it's also a good uh, media, a good halfway point where you can engage with people who are at that intersection of personal and professional. I think yes. versus Facebook. That's right. just my take on it. Like right. I have nobody I work with or professionally on Facebook. If, if I worked with you five years ago and we're still friends, sure, Facebook. But like right. totally. Facebook is, 
It's become Sorry. like, yeah, people have just skipped the Facebook in some ways. You know what I mean? So a lot of the people that haven't done social media, like my parents or my grandma, for instance, who's 90, just have skipped like Instagram. Instagram. You know what I mean? And your so, grandma's on Insta? Your 90-year-old yeah. grandma's on Insta? Yeah. Love She's it. not on Facebook, really. Or she has an account, but she doesn't <laughs> use it. Uh, but now, chicken or steak, if you're sitting out for a nice dinner. I, that's, I mean, it's not even a question. It's steak. I'm a, I am a red meat. I, I love steak. But you know what I love more than steak? I will take the best lamb chop in the world over steak. Ooh, lamb chop. Ooh, I like your style. Switching it up on it. New Zealand lamb chop, man. Or Icelandic lamb is pretty fucking good, too. Icelandic lamb is top. Icelandic. Oh, man. You're getting me hungry here. Laptop or smartphone? Uh, I'm going to go with my phone, man. It's an extension of my arm. It is, huh? They've they've really figured it out. Biologically. It's crazy how that that phone is just begins to be everything these days. Uh, Spotify or Pandora? Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, no, just if Spotify or Pandora, Sirius XM, Pandora, Sirius XM, Pandora, baby, movies or video games, uh, movies, reading books or listening to books, reading books, stocks or real estate, real estate, oceans or lakes, uh, oceans, oceans, baby. And when you wake up in the morning, you're looking at yourself in the mirror. Why do you love being yourself? Why do you love being you? I, I love the man that I've always was supposed to be and I finally am. That's awesome, brother. That's so amazing. And you look at yourself every day. I know you're stepping your game up every day because every day is, it, it has difficulties. We even talked about before the show. We're not going to bring it up, but every day has got difficulties. The world's going through some crazy shit right now. We still all got to wake up and say, hey, we're going we're gonna to do the best we can. We're going to be the best we can. If shit goes awry, then it goes awry. But there's nothing else we can do. Do you think you'll ever retire from the business or, you know, take a, take a step back from entrepreneurship? And I think it's in my blood. I think uh, it's something that I've always had since I was a kid, selling baseball cards and hustling mm. and doing all that. And then it really started to come out when I, when I went off into my own business and, right. have, and, and, and it like came to the surface. Like, and we said it before, once you work for yourself, it's really hard to go back. It's like impossible to go back. You like do anything to not go back. <laughs> no. Some weeks, we, folks, you're going to work 80 hours and some weeks you're going to work eight. And so you, and then you can be in Hawaii working if you needed to. Uh, do you have a skill Love you're it. looking to master right now? Is there something you're looking to get better at? That's a, that's a really good question. And I think it's about being present. I think, mm. I think it's about being present with my friends and my family and being less distracted from the technology that I'm tethered to. Yes. And I, so I'm suggesting you and anyone out there check out indistractable on audible indistractable. It's fascinating. A freaking fascinating yep. book. And I'm yeah. really listening to it. Cause it's like, this dude's just dropping gold nuggets, man. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. Uh, send, me the, send me the link afterwards. I'm going to share some good stuff with you too. I will. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite app now that we talk about the phone on a daily basis you like using? Oof, I'm, I'm looking at my phone. Well, well, first of all, it's, I, I have my coffee apps, right? That's a very, Oh, there we go. Um, Honestly, man, I, I, I really, I'm not super, I'm looking at my phone right now as we're talking. I'll tell you right now, my favorite app are my, are my fantasy sports apps. Yeah. I, I do fantasy sports. Uh, and it's fun. Oh, do who I'm, inter- I'm interviewing this guy, um, uh, Jeff Manns, who's one of the big fantasy sports writers. Oh, really? Uh, next week. And I'm talking to him, right? I do fantasy baseball. I don't know if you do. Uh, it's crazy. Fantasy baseball is nuts. Uh, and I'm interviewing him right before my draft. So <laughs> Wow! I, do you see how I figured nuggets. that out? You're gonna get some nuggets I'm, there. I'm, I'm, I'm interviewing. <laughs> I'm interviewing a head writer for a fantasy sports right before my draft. See how that also? I'm playing into some. Uh, so you can do yeah. your passions. You know, you can bring on the people you're passionate about too. That's the best part about being the host, baby. Ooh, yeah, that's that's, be, that's been can, a lot of fun too. You can be in control. You know. Um, and then, so be real for me. If you could sit down to whether an interview or whether you're sitting down to just an intimate dinner, and it's going to be a lamb chop dinner. With anyone in the world, who would you want to bring on that plane? Who would you want to come see? Is it, is it dead or alive? It could be either. I I would want it to be my grandfather, my dad, yes. my dad's father, and mm. I'll t- I'll tell you exactly why. One, my grandfather, my dad's father, was born in in 1901. He would be like 300 years old today, but he <laughs> passed away when I was when he passed away when I was very young. But from the stories I hear from my dad, my grandfather was an incredibly interesting human being. I don't know if you ever heard of the entertainer Neil Sedaka. He's like, an oh old yeah, kid. yes. My my grandfather delivered him as a baby. He brought wow. him into this world. Oh my god. And he lived in Brooklyn. And Neil Sedaka taught my dad how to play piano. Um, and my grandfather, if wow. you think about that that time of, of of life, you know, in the in the in the 30s and 40s, he was a mover and shaker in Brooklyn in this crazy swing time. I would love to sit down with him and understand his life and his stories. And wow. it would give me so much insight into my legacy, 
my dad's legacy, the family history, the past, um, mm-hmm. more important than anybody else in this world. And if you think about famous people too, they're pretty accessible right. from that second, third party perspective. You could learn about them. You could watch them and everything. But I want to go back to somebody who I never really had a chance to get to know. Absolutely. I would too, man. Cause I, my grandfather died when I was in high school, but he was always traveling over abroad. So I really only got maybe a handful of times ever even talked to him, you know? And, uh, one of the other best parts about creating content folks is that your families are going to be able to come back and look at this stuff, you know, years, you know, down the road and, and see who dad was, see who grandpa was, you know, in a way. I, um, I interviewed in, in December. So I do the, I do the LinkedIn live show too, which yeah, is yeah. The, the live extension of the, of the podcast. And I do it once a week. It's on LinkedIn live. And that for me is, so my, my show, the podcast is very, um, rigid as far as like structured where like I do a lot of research, like I have a story arc. I have points I don't want to go through, especially if it's like, I don't want to say a technical, but if it's somebody who I want to talk about like specific career tactics that I want to dig into, right. the live show is a free for all. And I absolutely love it. So in December, I had my daughter on and I gave her the homework assignment. Oh, to come nice. up with, uh, yeah, it's coming out soon. Episode 74. That's awesome. um, it's live though. I, t- I took the live show and I turned it into a, a formal podcast. Um, but episode 74 coming out, it's live now if you want to check it out. But I had my daughter, I gave her a homework assignment. I said, I said, come up with 10 questions to interview. And she interviewed me. Mm. Um, and it was like, we sat right here. She was sitting right next to me in the spot right here. And it's just a conversation with my daughter. And I'm going to, and I think about it all the time. I can't wait. Like she's turning eight. I can't wait till she's 18. And I'm like, Hey, let's, let's turn this thing back on. And I can't even, like, imagine 10 years from now, I'm literally going to go access file. Yes. December 29, 2019. <laughs> and it'll just come up in the middle of the air and it's going to fucking just be there and we'll watch it. Right. Like so true. access file, 12, 29, 19. Yeah. You might not even have to say it. You might just like automatically just cognitively just come up. <laughs> it's so true. Do you have a book? Is there something that has stuck to your heart and soul that you either reread or something that you like to uh, share the message of that book to others? Oh, that's, that's, that's a good one. Um, uh, I mean, uh, John Irving, A Prayer for Owen Meany is a, is a book that always kind of stuck out to me. It's about the uh, the human challenge, the human spirit, the human adventure. And it's also a book about empathy Mm. Um, and under an understanding and that book has always kind of stuck out to me for a while, but I'll be honest with you, man. I, I've been really, I, I used to love to read. I have really neglected reading over the last few years and it's just a function of time and mm. choosing to watch television content because there's so much out there and right. it's a little bit lazy, so to speak, but I miss reading. And, and one of my objectives now that my son's a little bit older or, or getting older, my daughter's getting older too, is to at least read a couple books a year, like right. carve out that time. Yeah. Just you know, instead like a couple of pages a day or something like that, or, you know, I, I'll, I'll be or reading audio the- or audio. Right. I mean, I, I, I'm in the car a bit, you know, I'm going to check out that book. You're going to send me, I'm going to check it out on audio, it is, whether it be yeah. the full version, whether it be cliff notes, as long as I'm learning something new, because I, I feel like right now I'm, I'm, I'm not doing a good enough job of filtering my intake of content. Gotcha. I'm not. And all of us can be better at that. I mean, I think that's something that everyone challenges because there's so much good goddamn content, interviews, shows, music. It's just hard to keep track uh, and focused. Well, man, I just really want to say thank you so much for your knowledge and wisdom and passion. I really appreciate our friendship that we've created over the time. I know that, you know, I was on your show and then I was like, you know what? I don't do this with everybody. I'm like, dude, I want to bring him on my show because of his energy, his passion. I know people were going to get some value out of it too. If you could give our listeners, my man, one last real talk thought, what would that be? Listen, we all have ups and downs. We all go through challenges in life, but I think it's most important when you're down in the dumps is to Mm. harness that inner tenacity. We all have it inside of us. That tenacity is what pulls you up. And the way to find your inner tenacity is to look to your North star. We all have it, whether it be your faith, your God, your kids, your family, uh, a freaking Big Mac, whatever it is, whatever that you need to look to to pull you up that's your north star find it and harness that inner tenacity to pull yourself forward guys and where is the best place for people to find you learn more about the podcast where's your favorite place to connect absolutely you can find me on linkedin adam j posner and you can check out www.thepause with a z cast.com the podcast.com all the episodes are up there you can find out more about me what i do there and also check out nhptalentgroup.com for the business side of the pause well, folks, you've been hanging out with my man, Adam Posner and Travis Tutal and Huff. I want to thank you again for your time today. And let's keep being real. We're all going through a lot right now. And real time outsource. My business is giving back to local and small businesses. 
Through our social media services and campaigns, we are actually helping small businesses get more exposure during these times and also when we get through these times. At the end of the day, we don't know how long this is all going to last, but most importantly, you got to think about your business right now. Take it seriously. So come check us out at realtimeoutsource.com, realtimeoutsource.com, and we would love for you to qualify and get the process started where we can take a look at your business and see if we can qualify you for some of our services. Um, at uh, little to no cost for most of the businesses. And, uh, and, and some businesses, you know, you're going to have to pay, but that's just part of life, right? But most importantly is that I think this is the time, folks, that you can actually help thrive in your business. And so I would love to help you personally with our team. We're all going through a tough time right now. So take advantage of us, realtimeoutsource.com. Check us out, and we would love to do some business with you and help you with your social and digital media in 2020 and beyond what another epic episode and uh, if you enjoyed the episode today can you please do me a favor and subscribe to our podcast the be real show on itunes or your favorite podcast platform and also take a little time today if you don't mind and give your boy t huff a review i would really super appreciate it and thank you so much for listening today